going to miss. Stream is offline. Well, hello and welcome back. <laughs> anyway, this is our afternoon session, and they are going to be talking about learning strategies. So, there you go, Moses. Thank you, Dr. Ruthie. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you, all of you who have come to uh, this session, those who are in this room and those who are without. I would like to say we are especially grateful to the State Department, to IREX, um, all the ILAP hosting universities, and especially JMU, where we are tonight. I want to say we are very, very grateful. Uh, on the team tonight, we have uh, very, very able people that are participating. Uh, we have Rita Oliveira here. We have El Haj Aliu Mbaye. And we have Esti uh, Villegas. You are all welcome to viewing us. Now, in this preparation of our PDM, we had a number of things that we were thinking about. And um, we thought, how best can we engage our learners in a given classroom? We thought that one of the biggest strategies is to teach them how to be good thinkers. And in thinking, they've got to be organized in order to come up with some good results. And hence, I'd like to say our PDM presentation um, say that uh, we are going to base our discussion tonight on the combination of both. What are thinking maps and how they can be applied? And then how can we formulate right and verbal learning tool, which this one can be used uh, specifically to start the class or the discussion, which is a motivating activity for our students. And it can also be a form of an assessment tool for our students. This one enhances students' critical thinking. It also enhances cooperative learning or student-centered learning, which thinking map okay, will give an idea on how students will develop their conceptual, conceptual ideas of the subject matter that you are going to have. This is not only for uh, some areas or some different content area, but it can be used for all content area. May it be science, math, English, or some activities that you would like to do in your classroom. At the same time, this one can also be a helpful tool for us to be able to use in different grade levels. Now, I'll be discussing to you the eight thinking maps that we can use in our classroom. So the first one that we have here is what we call a circle map. A circle map, obviously you have there two particular circle, the inner one and then the outer circle. The inner circle that we have here will be the key idea that we will be writing on. And then the outer circle will be all the ideas that you pop in, okay, of what would be the main idea that you have there. Then the second one is what we call a bubble map. So obviously a bubble map, at the middle, you will be having the main idea again. And then on the outer circles that you have is you're using an adjective to describe the main topic that we have here. For the third thinking map, it's a double bubble map. So obviously, it increases. It increases thinking skills. So if it is a grade schooler, you can use circle map first. But if it is for secondary or middle school, you can have bubble and double bubble map that we have. For this double bubble map, we have here comparing and contrasting. Comparing and contrasting, we can use this one in our English classes, also in some mathematical concepts that we have. So you can have their similarities and differences that we have. Next, we move now on the fourth kind of thinking map. So the fourth one is a tree map. Usually tree map is used in science. It's because this one gives you the organization of content, okay? Organization or classification that you have. So it has a lot of branches. That's why it's called tree map that we have here. The fifth one is a brace map, which is very useful in math because this one gives you the whole and the parts, okay, which gives the relationship within the content that you have here. 
So the whole is broken down into parts. Like for example, you're discussing in math um, expanded notation. So you have there the whole, and then it can be broken down into different um, tens, hundreds, or thousand parts that we have there. Then sixth one is a flow map. So this one is very useful as a timeline, especially in social studies, because it gives you the sequence of events that we have. Or sometimes in those uh, manipulative skills wherein you have the step-by-step -step procedure, this is a very helpful tool for our students to have the flow map. The last two that we have here is a multi-flow map. So what's a multi-flow map that we have? So you would see later on an example of this. This one is a cause and effect thing. So like for example, we experience typhoon, we experience some snow. So what can be the cause? What can be the effect that you can write in there? And then the last one, the eighth one, is what we call the bridge map. So what now do we have in a bridge map? This one is basically an analogy or metaphor wherein you can have a relationship from concrete on to the abstract thing that we have. Usually we use this one for novels in terms of storyline that we have here. So these are the eight thinking maps that we have in module one, which we will be using in our activity later on. Now I hand it over to Hita. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming and for being watching online too. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about effective questions and how they are important in, in our classrooms. This is the main topic of our second module. So first of all, I'd like to define what effective questions are. So effective questions are the ones that uh, promote high order thinking skills. They are not limited by yes, no answers, which means they are open-ended questions that require students to think, to analyze, and to reflect about a content. Uh, they are engaging and they stimulate uh, students' discussion and creativity. So why is it important to have uh, use effective questions in the classroom? Uh, as we all know, uh, the kinds of questions we, we ask uh, define the level of learning we have, the kind of thinking we have. So based on that, we decided to work on Bloom's taxonomy to help uh, teachers ask effective questions to uh, students in the classroom. Uh, of course, we want to have our students uh, working with the higher levels of thinking. So according to Bloom's, there, there is a hierarchy of uh, learning uh, uh, levels in the classroom. It goes from uh, the lower level to the higher level. So when we want to have our students working with the higher levels of thinking, we are going to ask effective questions based on the three uh, highest levels of Bloom's taxonomy, which are analyzing, evaluating, and creating. But of course, we can have these levels of thinking uh, combined in the same questions. We can have questions in, that require students to understand and analyzing at the same time or to apply and create something. Okay? So I would like now to invite Alu to talk about the activity that we'll be practicing today. Thank you, Rita. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I say hello to, my, to all my Senegalese colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is a practical activity. So we have here, uh, we'll give you some handouts. Uh, you have to do what we call a picture analysis. So we talked about uh, the eight types of thinking maps. We talked about writing effective questions. So we have now to practice it. Uh, we'll be giving you a, a fishbowl, and you have to pick one type of thinking map you're going to work on. Moses, would you like to give them? OK, you have to pick one thinking map and work on it. You can work in groups of two. Yeah. Okay, Rita will give you the handouts uh, according to the type of thinking map you have. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. So you have to uh, listen to the instruction now. Uh, we have to do what you call a picture analysis. You should... Uh, practice brainstorming ideas in this picture analysis. The main theme is 
climate change. Now use the thinking map you have picked and write all the ideas you have, you can have about this picture. Now if you finish writing, the, uh, yeah, if you finish uh, uh, writing your ideas, you have to ask three effective questions based on Bloom's taxonomy. I repeat the instruction. Okay, uh, the, the main idea of the picture is climate change. Now brainstorm ideas using uh, the thinking map you have and after you ask three effective questions. Don't forget, if you have any problem, you can talk to, uh, turn the page. Uh, there are some explanations what thinking maps are and what effective questions are. Thank you. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask. just to show it. Okay, if, if there are any questions you have, you can ask them. You have just five minutes. This one? Okay, on the flip side of the paper, you have explanations of what thinking maps are. Okay, you can check the, uh, the explanations. And the Bloom's taxonomy also. So to ask the effective question, you have to refer to Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, try to ask uh, questions that uh, can help students, can develop high-order thinking to uh, students. Okay, if you are finished, you can raise your hand. Just to see. Don't forget that our topic is climate change. Yeah. Okay. So just try to have some questions there, one or two questions that you can think of about the main topic about climate change and the things that you were able to have in a circle map, in a bubble map, in a tree map. In a tree map, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to refer to the Bloom's taxonomy when you ask your questions. Thank you.
time is it? It's time. 30 seconds. It's time, huh? mm-hmm. Just gives them one more minute. Just as they drink like their hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, for those who are watching, try to check your handle as well and try to work on it. So we only have 30 more minutes. One minute left. One minute, 30 seconds. (laughs) Sorry, 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Okay, that's fine. have all the time. Okay, thank you. Your attention, please. Now I'll ask Moses to, to, to proceed with the next activity. Thank you, Aliu. Uh, thank you, participants. Our time for the class activity is up, and now we would like to embark on a feedback. I would like to remind you that uh, these concepts that we are sharing tonight are simply metaphoric. If we are talking about a circle, uh, remember the shape of the circle and remember the hub, which is the center of the circle. Now, in the middle is our main idea that is climate change. And I'm sure you have borrowed from here and there to try and arrive at some uh, ideas. Now, all the ideas in uh, this class are correct. And since they are secondary, they are going to be uh, pasted in the outer part of the circle. And that means you will have um, developed your thinking in a cyclic way. I would like now to get some feedback um, from you. Who has a circle map in the class? Oh, yeah. We put effects on types of effects of, of climate change, like effect of the ocean level plants. Yes, please. So that's, that's one effect, and then some sort of a measurement technique to be sure we can measure what kind of change we're talking about. That's wonderful. So measurement, um, as well as effect? Right. Yeah. Welcome ideas. I'm going to ask a couple of online questions. Yes, please. Um, one question is, what are the effects of climate change on poor countries? Exactly. Um, and then another question, does climate change always cause negative effects? Okay. Tell them good questions. Very, very good questions, yeah. We want to thank you. Uh, so climate and poverty. Climate, what is the cause? And so on and so forth. All these thinking processes have been brought to us in a circular way. And so all those ideas that you have brought shall be pasted onto the outer part of the circle. Look at this. Um, We have some high temperature, some heating, drought, uh, affecting the ozone layer, destruction of the flora and fauna, conservation of the soil, uh, flooding, then pollution, and the vicious cycle of um, climate change continues to manifest. At the same time, if we are careful to guard climate change, then we shall harvest positive attributes of it. So I want to thank you that we have looked at uh, climate change. Who has the flow map? Okay, you do not have the flow map with you here, but we want to think about a flow map as that which um, gives us sequence of events. Now, assuming our main idea is climate change, the sequencing of events should be logical and should point to a certain conclusion. That means in a sequence we flow. Once again, metaphorically, it's uh, borrowed from the liquids, um, from one part to another, normally drawn by gravity, and in this case, drawn by your thinking capacities. So from climate change, we can go to the ozone layer, high temperature, 
air pollution, harmful gases, exhaustion from cars and factories, and all these ideas as teachers watching both here and out there. Remember that the students' contribution are always from a number of places and allow them always to draw their examples from across the spectrum of the curriculum. This is a good way to organize and synchronize what we call sequencing questions using a flow map. I want to thank you and I give my uh, colleague to explain a few further things. Yeah, thank you, Moses. So now we're going to, to explain double bubble map. Here, you don't have a double bubble map, but you, <laughs> we, we have the, the ideas uh, here in the inner circles. And in the outer circle, we have uh, dif differences, and here we have similarities. So uh, as you can see, uh, a double bubble map uh, documents uh, the thinking process involved in showing similarities or differences. We show here, we can use it to, to for example, if you have, a, if you have one to, 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 to talk about, for example, a story, we can use this to show similarities which are, that we put uh, inside and outside, we can put the differences. Okay. Uh, now this is uh, the tree map. Uh, in the tree map, you have the main idea at the top, and you have uh, 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 the whole subject. You have the whole subject, and the main idea, main idea, main idea. And after we have details, details, details. So this is. Uh, Really, what you? Sorry. They have a tree map. They have a tree map. Yes, I will. I will. I will. I will okay. come to it. <laughs> I will. I will come. To it. So I want to explain the the tree map first. The what you have here, as I said, the main, uh, the whole subject, main idea, main idea, main idea, and after you have the details. No, who have a tree map here? Okay. Now, what do you have exactly in your tree map? What have you brain some of the ideas? Well, we came up with three questions uh -huh. related to the topic. Uh -huh. so our first question is, what can we do to help her? Mm -hmm. Our second question is, what is the logos of this image? So mm -hmm. what is the writer trying to tell us? Mm -hmm. And can you defend it? Mm -hmm. Is it true or not? Mm -hmm. And our third question is, does climate change affect countries equally mm -hmm. and in the same way? Okay, but this is, this, is, uh, this is, I think, the part of effective questions. But I want to know exactly uh, if your whole subject is climate change, what is the main idea you have brainstormed first? So deriving from here, we could go to different countries. Uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. um, the second one could be um, proof or evidence, could be the same, could be the, the second main idea. And the third one could mm -hmm. be um, solutions. Okay, very good. Very good, so let's show what, what we can have. Uh, so this is, if you bring some ideas in this picture analysis, this is what you can have. Uh, as I said, the whole subject is climate change. Now, one main idea is ozone layer related to climate change, and you have a main idea, uh, uh, details, depletion, causes, as I said, you mentioned the causes. You have coolants in refrigerators, aerosol sprays can. Uh, another uh, main idea related to this topic, yes? Uh, okay, another main idea related to this topic is high temperature, industrialization, pollution, and solar system as the details. And the last one is flooding, as you can see, glacier melting, excessive rain, tsunami, and SK, which are the details. Okay, so Rita. Thank you. So now we have the brace map. The brace map, it's used to identify the whole and part relationships. So you don't have this map with you. But we created this map. It's also about climate change. And in the brace map, we uh, literally break things apart. So we divided this topic into four uh, subtopics, which are pollution, temperature, uh, negative impact, and trash and garbage. And from these subtopics, we came up with two other uh, subtopics related to the, the topic.
So that's the, the brace map. And now you have the bubble map with you. Who has the bubble map? So in the bubble map, what we have, the main idea, and then we use adjectives to describe this main idea. So which other ideas can you add to this bubble map? We have uh, methane pollution. Very good. And melting ice, unpredictable storms. Very good, very good. So all of these things uh, we can add to our bubble map. Remember, we always use adjectives to describe this idea. Okay, now Esti is going to talk about the two remaining. Thank you, Hita. So we're on the last two. So the other one that we have here is a multi-flow map. Anyone who has a multi-flow map? Okay, so <laughs> what do you have as cause and effect in our multi-flow map? <laughs> okay. Okay, we have on the cause, mm -hmm. human impact. Oh. Okay, it's almost the same with oh. ours, human activities. Uh, increase in population and over... Overconsumption of over consumption of resources. resources. That's a nice answer. And then for the results, we have pollution, increased demand in resources, and loss of resources. Okay, thank you for a very nice output. So multi-flow map basically will give you the cost and the effect. It doesn't mean that each of the causes that you enumerate will be equivalent to the effect that you have. You can just write it them on the different uh, boxes that you have. And then the last one that we have here, which you don't have in your copies, so, but you can use this thing. We call this one the bridge map, so concrete to abstract. So with the climate change here, so from uh, concrete, uh, uh, from the concrete thing, which are warm, hot, cold, onto the ozone layer and the season. So the teacher will be facilitating this thing or process how students will understand the concrete idea onto the abstract or vice versa that you have there. Now we move on to the effective questions that we were able to pose. So let's add, uh, these are some samples that we have here. So we can have a trial of what uh, high level of Bloom's taxonomy were we able to have. And my uh, group mates can help me answer some of the questions that you were able to pose as well. So let's have one volunteer. Can we have one of the questions that you have written? So what um, cities would be underwater with climate change? Okay, so what cities would be underwater. underwater? So with this type of question, what do you think would be in a high level of thinking skill? You can check your handouts at the back. Is it part of the remembering or the understanding part or is it analyzing? Okay, so it can be under... Analyzing. That's a good one. So that's a good question. We have one example here. What can we do to fight against climate change consequences? So under Bloom's taxonomy, this can be in what part? So what can we do to fight against climate change? Okay. So as what Hita have mentioned, we can have a variety of answers because it can uh, be analyzing. It can also be evaluating that we have there. Okay, any other questions that you were able? Yes? Explain how human impact affects your community. Okay, explain how human impact affects the community that we have. So what can that be in terms of Bloom's taxonomy? It's more of explanation. It's more of under analyzing as well. We can have that as an analyzing thing. So we have here some other questions, right? An article. In your school newspaper, so this part will be creating because after knowing all those things, the concepts, so they can create now. How does man's action on the environment favor climate change? Give at least three examples supported by details. So this can be applying. Explain how we, how we can maintain full flood-free. It's a flood-free environment, so that would be analyzing. What do you think causes change in the atmosphere? Understanding or applying. And then the last one, what would be a danger to ecosystem and species if global temperature continue to rise? So these are some examples in question, effective question from low level to a high level of thinking. If our students were able to give a low level of question, we don't stop in there. We don't uh, allow students just to say yes or no answer. So we have to process the student's answer and ask them to make it in a higher level of questions that we have. So in this point, we would like to thank everyone, especially JMU, our group, Hita, Aliu, and Moses, 
and all who are watching uh, with us right now. And uh, we say thank you in Filipino. Salamat. Uh, in Portuguese, obrigado. In French, merci beaucoup. In Wolof, derjef. In Swahili, asante sana. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there are some questions that you would like to give us, so we're welcoming all questions also from other schools. I hope you were able to enjoy the thinking map activity and be able to have those effective questions activity as well, which you can use back home, not only in science, English, math, social studies, but in all subjects, in all um, grade level that you will be having or you will be handling. One thing about this is that you don't need the handout. The kids can create mm -hmm. the, the maps themselves. So it's not something that teachers have to run copies of. So yeah. if you have 70 kids in your class, you don't have to run 70 copies of this. It can take a piece of paper. Yeah, we don't need a, a lot of technology to work with thinking exactly. maps like exactly. in, in our schools. Yeah. I think this is really... Uh, uh, good for, 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 for our situation where we are in resource challenge areas. We do not have the possibility to have many copies for, for, for all the students. This is really a good uh, thing to do. Yeah, to ask the students to write, to, to, to copy themselves or to, to create themselves the thinking maps. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Other questions? The concept of thinking maps been around a long time. Is it something Okay, basically, um, it's, uh, this thing is uh, an enhancement of what we used before during our time, which are graphic organizers, they call it concept map, it's just the same thing. They just try to revise it into what we call thinking map because there are different, so to cater the differentiated uh, things or different activities that we can have. So it's just the same like we have, though it increases the level from like the bubble map, okay, the circle map, these are low level of concept map that we have before, and then they increase us into bridge map or the double bubble map for higher order thinking skill. So I used to use a lot of thinking maps when I was teaching um, grades six through eight, um, and what I really liked about the double bubble especially is so many students struggle to, to draw a Venn diagram, believe it or not. Uh, they either make the space between the circles too small, they make the circles too small. And so what I love about thinking maps is that because of their structure, it allows for infinite possibilities. Like students are not just limited to three causes on a multi-flow. They could go five or six causes and the structure allows very easily for students to add, so I like I love the fact that they aren't confining or making students feel they have the only thoughts they can share is what they fit in the space. These things can be as big as as their as their thoughts are. So I, I really am a big fan of thinking maps. Okay. That, that was really a very nice comment, and hopefully um, educators like us can use this one back home. It's because you can, as what was mentioned, you can have a variety of this thing. You give your students creativity on how they will be working on their own thinking maps. And we might know that some students might be able to develop their own pattern of this thinking maps because they are very creative and they are very exposed in some other activities like uh, in technology. So they can develop their own thinking maps as well. Okay, you know, uh, what is interesting uh, with these uh, thinking maps is that uh, they help students uh, document the thinking process. You know, you can have many, many, many ideas, but sometimes you have problems of organization. So if you use thinking maps, it can help you organize your ideas. And uh, if it is, for example, in writing, you want to write, you, you, you want to... to to do an essay writing. So you have many ideas, you can organize them in thinking maps and have to use these thinking maps to write uh, your essay correctly. So we can use them in English, in science, in social studies, in all the subjects that we can have. And you can use it also individual and group work. 
Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this one can be used individually, group work. Okay, as what I mentioned, it can be a form of assessment. It can start the class as well, or sometimes not really discussing concept, but you can use this one to know your students, to know your colleagues if you have some activities, spe specifically if you use the bubble map wherein you're giving objectives, okay, at the end of the entire class that you will be having. Thank you. <laughs> you selected a good topic, bravo. Can we use a thinking map for math? And then a related, can we use a thinking map for English? Yes. I, I think I, I have already. Yes, he had an, he had an example yeah. for English yeah. about the essay, for example, writing mm -hmm. uh, for math. Okay, also. for math, you can use the brace map. Any, any of the thinking map can be used in any subject. Like, for example, in a circle map, you can just write, for example, yeah. math is equation. You write the equation on the main circle, and then students can write their addition, multiplication, some symbols that can be related because circle map, basically, you have the main topic, and then you just add other topics that are related to the equations that you can have. In English, if you have there, for example... Um, uh, for example, in English, uh, for students to understand the structure of a text, I think we can use the tree map where you can organize uh, ideas from the whole subject, the whole idea of the text, and main ideas in detail. So the students can use this to understand the structure of a text. You can have many possibilities in English, as I said a while ago, in writing, in essay writing, and in all other aspects. So he says, I believe that thinking maps can be used across the curriculum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I'd like to say that your topic is great. Okay, thank you for that very nice comment. So we would like to, is no more question online as well? Okay, so we would like to thank everyone for watching and I hope you were able to learn a lot of things with this um, professional development module that we were able to present today. Again, I'm Esti, salamat. I'm Hita, obrigada. I'm Aliou, merci beaucoup in French, but I will say thank you in my local language. Jerejef. I'm Moses, Asante sana, kwa lugha ya Kiswahili.